Hey and welcome to your briefing. I'm Boeing 777 pilot and in this video we're going to explore a unique airport. For those who do polar operations and cross the Arctic on their way to and from the US, you'll know how limited your options can be in case of a diversion. Apart from limited communication, freezing sub-zero temperatures and radiation, there just aren't that many airports around. So where do you go if something happens? One of the safe havens is Thule Air Base, also known as Pitufik Airport. It lies in the northwestern part of Greenland. Thule Air Base is the United States' northernmost military air base in the world. It's manned by around a total of 600 people, 150 of which are US personnel. It's an extremely remote area where the temperatures only creep above freezing for about three months of the year in the summer. From the end of October to mid-February, the airbase is covered in perpetual darkness because the sun never rises. Apart from the military traffic, the airport is also serviced by five weekly civilian flights, one of them being Air Greenland's A330. So the airport is large enough to accommodate large passenger aircraft. The airbase is also well equipped to handle medical issues in case of a diversion. They provide services like primary care, 24-hour emergency services, general surgery, laboratory, radiology, and a pharmacy. The airport layout is fairly simple. It has a single runway, it's 3047 meters long and 46 meters wide, labeled 08 Tango and 26 Tango. Its elevation is 251 feet above mean sea level. The preferred runway for arrival is 08 Tango, and it's serviced with ILS, RMP and VOR approaches. A circling maneuver is required for landing on runway 26 Tango, and is restricted to the south of the runway. For departure, runway 26 Tango is the preferred direction, but an SID is available for the easterly runway. The approach from the east and departure towards the west over the water will keep you clear of the terrain to the east. You'll notice that all direction designators are labeled as T, Tango. The T represents reference to true north. This is because of the large magnetic variation in this area. Note that generally ATC reported winds are given in reference to magnetic north. So clarify the reference source before shooting the approach. All instrument approaches are based on TERPs and begin with an arc and lead to the same area on the extended center line of runway 08 Tango. Regardless of the approach, remember that severe turbulence and downdrafts can be expected when winds exceed 30 knots from the southeast. When landing on runway 08 Tango, you'll notice an upslope profile and according to the charts, no papi angle is available so follow your instrument guidance to avoid any illusions. None of the procedures are corrected for cold temperatures. This is crucial in extreme environments like the Arctic, so make sure to add adjustments to avoid contact with terrain. The ILS approaches have a low final approach point of just around 1,500 feet AGL and a non-standard missed approach procedure that goes up to 5%. The lowest minima for this approach is around 1,000 meters, which is quite high. ILS approaches with standard TURPS go around gradients have a visibility minima of 2,200 meters. Non ILS approaches like the RMP for runway 8 Tango have a non standard glide path of 3.24 degrees, and the VOR approach is offset by 2 degrees from the runway track, which is not too significant. All of the go-arounds are designed to avoid the high terrain to the east with MSA of about 6,200 feet. Ground ops seem standard, but the southerly taxiways are charted as closed. Regardless, all major ground facilities like hangars and tower are to the north. Runway and taxiway contamination could be a severe risk, and braking action could be prohibitively poor, so check your landing distance thoroughly. A slippery runway with strong winds could present directional control issues if you're diverting because of an engine failure. Regardless of the runway used, departure tracks lead out towards the west, away from the terrain. 
with similar threads discussed for the approach procedures. The main point to remember is that in the Arctic region, sudden drastic weather changes can occur, and extensive knowledge of winter ops is essential. When being vectored, no altitude corrections are necessary down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Due to potential severe weather changes, careful consideration should be made before diverting, and Greenland also has some high terrain, so take that into account if dealing with pressurization issues, because grid moras can be higher than 10,000 feet. This concludes your briefing. Hopefully you'll never have to divert to a place like Thule, but if you do, now you're familiar with what to expect. If you have any additional threats, share them below in the comments section, especially if you've been to Thule. Let's make every airport feel like home base.